This is America Visits Oman. We're in the, uh, the mountain region, not far from the capital city of Muscat, and the weather is absolutely spectacular, and you can see the scenery. These mountains, absolutely gorgeous. Oman, if you don't know it, is in the Persian Gulf and in the vicinity of the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, and Yemen. And believe me, we have been every place in Oman around Muscat, in particular a fantastic cultural festival. And the warmth and hospitality of the Omani people cannot be denied. It's a peaceful country, very, very friendly and unique, and they believe in talking, not fighting. This is America Visits Oman. This is America is brought to you by the National Education Association, the nation's largest advocate for children and public education. The Republic of Kazakhstan in the heart of Eurasia, a rich history, a culture of hospitality, and a future of development and growth. The U.S.-China Education Trust and the F.Y. Chang Foundation. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. During our time in Amman, the characteristics of the country and the culture made themselves known time and time again. The hospitality of the Omani people, the richness of their traditions, the role of Islam in daily life, the beauty of the country, and of course, the tremendous impact that Oman's leader, His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Said Al Said, has had on the country and the people. I spoke with the advisor to His Majesty the Sultan for cultural affairs. What do you think is at the heart of His Majesty's popularity? Everyone I talk with treats him with such reverence, such respect, uh, such love, I would say. This is correct. His Majesty Sultan Abus bin Said uh, is the father of the nation. He in that fatherly role in Oman. When he came to the throne in 1970, Oman was the closed book to the eyes of the outside world. And Omanis among themselves were separated. Each region is separated from the other region. And each society is becoming closed in within its own self. When he came to the throne in 1970, he threw the doors wide open for Omanis to be themselves, to think, to work, to love, to act and interact. He led them into all the works of life of modern today. He earned that feeling of love, respect, and cherish. In the old days when he used to travel, and his, the communication was uh, uh, only through the physical uh, approach. Uh, because in 1970 there were no television, no radio, no press. He, he traveled all Oman from Salala to, to Musandam. He traveled and so on an interval period. And he, there was no asphalt road he, in, in winter and in summer. Uh, he camped between the uh, bed forts and uh, uh, land rovers and uh, range rovers later on. He camped and he shared the, with his ministers to understand, feel, and live the hardships the Omanis lived. And through that tour he took throughout the country, he was able to carry the caravan of development from one place to another. You talk about the royal tour. Yeah. When it goes back into the 70s. Yes. Now there just was another. Do you call it the royal tour? Yes. It is... Somebody called it a royal tour. We, in Arabic, we call it the royal, royal tour. Uh, but some of them call it the uh, Oman Open Parliament uh, tour. Yani. 
because it's his majesty meets with the, with the dignitaries of his of the society and he sits with them and he, the, the the royal camp is surrounded by many uh, people who follow him from one place to another the, from the Omanis, men and women uh, it's, if you like it's a moving uh, uh, it's a, it drives the economy also wherever he is there with the, his entourage then a lot of uh, uh, buying and selling takes place around that royal, royal camp يعني. Uh, sometimes you have people getting married there يعني. <laughs> so how many people go on the tour? It depends from one place to another, يعني. and where he where he camps, people come to the camp. So the so the, so the, so His Majesty goes out with his cabinet. Not all of them. Some. A few numbers of the cabinet. Yes, of and they go to a particular location. Yes. And they where do they live? In tents. They set up tents. Tents, yes. <laughs> tents. You have in the tents. You have what you need. You discover what you need when you have tents. So this is, the, this is the ruler of the country is out in the tent? Yes. And he meets with his people? He meets with his people on a certain day in that, in that uh, ca- encampment in that place. One day is uh, allocated for that. So people are invited to come. And he sits with them. Like that photograph you see there. Uh-huh. They come, he talks to them. Then each one of them, they come in front of him and they talk to him. And it, what he have, what they have, what they have to either query or demand or whatever it is, he listens to them. And this, if there's a question about uh, one ministry and he does not have the, he, he asked the minister himself to come and answer for, the, for this question يعني, at that time, on the spot. Does he have big challenges? Well, the challenges today, like, uh, I think it's an international and universal challenge to provide uh, new opportunities and w- jobs for uh, young uh, people. And uh, we are managing, it, I feel we are managing it, uh, managing it in a very proper manner and in a very uh, practical uh, way. And the Omani uh, youth is responding positively to that. They said the Sultan has put the ball now in our, net, in our court now. We have to prove that we are able to benefit from it. Mm. And that's, that pleased him very well. He heard it on television, actually. And that pleased his majesty very well that the people understood, uh, uh, the youth understood what is required from them uh, at, this, at this juncture to be able uh, to show their, uh, to play their role in building their country. Do you think the people in Oman are happy people? Well, if I will quote, uh, there was a, uh, a censor or what you call it, uh, uh, poll was being conducted and Oman was uh, one of the first Arab countries uh, in happiness. Number one in happiness in the Arab world. And yet we look at the Arab world and we see a lot of trouble, a lot of chaos. Huh? I think we, the Arab world is passing through a lot of evolution, discovering themselves. Uh, after a certain time of uh, history, half century, uh, after the what you call it, the independence era. In Oman, we have not, we've never been colonized. So we have been always independent. We have been occupied by the Portuguese at one time, and the Omanis kicked them out. But after that, we, be, we retained our uh, independence. Countries who did not have, they were colonized and uh, this became independent. The, their new governments have uh, imitated what the colonized force on the land was treating the people, not the source of the authority in the colonial uh, capitals. Therefore, there was uh, an imported ideas uh, in the Arab world, either from the West or from the East. Either the plural system with a lot of uh, corrupted feelings inside it, or that one tight jacket uh, comprehensive system, one party rule. Yani. And both were both were not suitable for the society. When the Arab Spring was evolving, how did the Sultan handle it here? Well, we had our spring early. We had our spring in 1970. <laughs> His Majesty Sultan Qaboos led the Omani Spring in 1970 uh, to where what we are now, where we are now, and this is what we are uh, benefiting from. He led it not alone with the people for the people, by the people. Mm. 
and from there, and he conducted his rule through a direct allegiance from all chiefs and individuals of uh, in Omani societies and villages and towns. He literally and physically drove his car to see them all and to meet them all and to have their loyalty and align, align, I mean, allegiance to his, to his rule. Uh, uh, according to the Sharia law, uh, he has been uh, nominated to lead them, and he's doing that. What's the fun of your work? My fun of work is to see that uh, I'm still uh, being able to serve my country and my sultan, and to be able to be part of the making of things could happen, <laughs> and to see them through. And that makes me feel that in Oman, it is unique that you can be part of something to be, to be planned and part of something to be executed, and then you see it happening. And this, we are blessed in this uh, country because, uh, in a sense, we are a young nation in development, and we are an ancient nation in history. Uh, so we are enjoying the discovery of our ancestors and the building of new, uh, a new life for our people. And that's uh, uh, a dramatic parallel feeling in the same time. During our visit to Oman, the annual, nightly, months-long culture festival in Muscat, at two locations, I may add, was in full swing with arts, crafts, music, and food, not only from Oman, but also from countries around the world. Year, I talked with the chairman of Muscat year. municipality. Let's talk about this magnificent festival. Uh, how, how, how would you even begin to describe what we're a part of this evening? The who, what, when, where, why? <laughs> Run with that. Well, you know, it's... A uh, it's, cultural uh, festival, huh? It is a cultural festival. It's, uh, it's actually uh, an attempt to, to create uh, the Davos of culture here, the, ah. the summit of cultures and the traditions, the whatever is sustainable with human condition uh, to be part of this festival, for all of them to come and celebrate uh, our cultural differences in a, in a very mosaic way, in a very harmonious way, uh, in, a, in a, uh, a display of music and song and, and handicrafts and traditions. Uh, it's almost uh, an attempt to uh, uh, transcend culture into much more of what is common in our humanity. In, uh, so it's not only Omani culture we're celebrating no, here. No, no. You've invited many yes. countries to participate? To participate, yes, of course. So we have the, handic the International Handicrafts uh, uh, Festival that is happening at the moment. And these are the top handicrafts in the world who come from uh, Africa, from uh, Europe, from, um, from, from the Americas, uh, from East Europe. And uh, we've created uh, an award for the best uh, in handicrafts. We have, as you, you can hear, the, uh, the International Muscat Folklore Festival. Every year we bring from different countries and every year we try to expand on, on, on these events. We have, uh, uh, we have also the sports events that also have uh, different nations coming all together here, like the Tour of Oman, which has... Uh, the bicycle tour? The bicycle tour yeah. that, you know, uh, uh, ride across the country with uh, cyclists from all over the world and um, uh, so we have so many so many things happening I cannot keep count. So I gather that not only what the site here but there's another site that's similar to this yes. in another part of the yes. city. Yes. Right? yes, yes, there are two, so two, two sites. Two sites, yes. And you are the head of the municipality, yes. the, like the mayor of uh, of one of our cities. You can say that. So what would you say would be some of the values that the uh, culture holds dear? Uh, I think tolerance is one of the biggest uh, 
values uh, and principal values of the Omani people and uh, <coughs> the inclusiveness uh, of, of the society itself with, with, with others is, uh, is another. Um, of course, you know, uh, hospitalities could be in almost a cliché yes. by now, you know. <laughs> and uh, uh, also the, uh, the Omani people are, are uh, um, uh, down to earth, in my opinion. Uh, they hold uh, humility as, as an important aspect of uh, 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 a human value to them. Uh, the, uh, of course, uh, you know, with that comes the rest of uh, what is well known of, uh, of desert people, uh, you know, uh, the uh, solid values of family, uh, oriented and uh, protecting uh, uh, the weak and the and the and the uh, uh, visitors and uh, and nature and uh, so th these are basically most of the the most important values that uh, you could find in in the Omani society. This is a beautiful country, isn't it? You have uh, the sea, the desert, the cities. I mean, it's it's, uh, it's the it's, mountains. It's it's a blessed country with uh, with uh, 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 a very interesting uh, composition of terrains. Uh, you know, ranging from uh, amazing, and that, this is not biased by any means, uh, but it's uh, it's it's blessed by long coasts of all sorts of uh, uh, terrains and uh, topography and. Uh, an amazing ge geology uh, in the country, and it com uh, it combines uh, sweeping mountains of all colors uh, and sand dunes, deserts. Uh, a lot of pieces of it you might say you you would experience in the in the southwest uh, of the uh, United States. Yeah, yes. yes. At the Culture Festival, we heard many different kinds of Omani music, which is so different from the Western music that we know. Examples of this music were presented on many, many stages at the festival, and our good friend and coordinator from the Ministry of Information, Shakar Al-Raimi, told me more about Arab music. It's kind of rituals, speaking about Prophet Muhammad, about his story, about his message, about his uh, good for humanity, the messages conveyed, and about the good deeds. Not happened all, all the time. It's always in any part of Oman. Yeah. And even in the other uh, Islamic countries, yeah, there is something similar to that. Yeah. Would it happen at a mosque? Not, I would say, in a mosque, but in public halls or uh, where people get together and sit. Because the mosque is for prayers. This is not a prayers. It's like telling a story, some kind of story. He's talking about Muhammad, about his uh, birth, and how he grew up, and about his miracles, and the message. This is a, goes around that topic, yeah. Well, it can go 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour. It depends on the, how long the poem is, or how long the uh, story is tell, telling. And how do all of these people know what to do? Well, it's part of the heritage, you know. We've been listening to this since when we, when we were young, when children. And anyone can part, take part in this. It's not necessary. Yeah, there are uh, some bands or group of people say it, but anyone can take part, can go and join in. And you don't, it's not difficult, you know. You would know what to do? Yeah, if I will go and sit there and, you know. The story is ended. Yeah. Their story is ended. Yes. <laughs> Good. That night, Shocker explained the meaning of a traditional dance performance. Well, it's a dance of manhood and uh, courage. So now it's appraising that you enter somewhere with your rival and with your weapon, dancing, sewing, and also to revive the old traditions and manners. So the first part, he said, you advance with the manhood like, and the other part, 
answering them to revive the old the tradition and heritage of the area. Turnabout is fair play, and I was invited to be a guest on the hour-and-a-half-long television show produced nightly and live at the festival. We obtained some footage from the broadcast. We tasted the food, we looked at some uh, musical performances, and uh, we uh, wandered around, met some people, uh -huh. and a thought came to my mind, since we're doing a program on the culture uh -huh. of Oman, how would you describe the culture of Oman? What that's should we bring back to the United States? Oh, that's an amazing question, because <laughs> Oman is very rich with its culture. Uh, if you visit the heritage city right over yes. there, you will find a lot of amazing materials that you can actually use and talk about in terms of uh, traditional outfits, food, uh, uh, even uh, the uh, folklore, a lot of different things and different aspects about our culture that you can uh, present in your show and talk about in your show. So I'll make a list if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take the list. I think it's wonderful to be doing this program and having fireworks go up yeah. at the same time. You know, by this time, I got used to having the fireworks behind me. If they're not there, I can't talk. Can you believe it? <laughs> well, I, th I think it's marvelous the way uh, we can talk in English and you do the translation as well. Um, thank you. I, I wasn't trained for this, but uh, I guess I just got used to it. <laughs> I'd like to translate that while you enjoy the fireworks. I love it. Uh, you can enjoy it while, while I, I translate that. طبعا هو ذكر لي ان تحدث عن سالته انا عن زيارته للحليه لسلطنه عمان وايش الاماكن اللي زارها غير دار الاوبرا السلطانيه اللي كان اللي زارها بالامس قال انه هو اجى لحديقه العامرات Islam has a huge impact on the people of Oman. Outside the capital city, we saw a small mosque where locals and workers in the area were coming to the mosque as they heard the call to noon prayer. It was a chance for us to see and experience Islam undisturbed by any Western misconceptions. Our cameraman, Saeed Al Salman, suggested we race back to Muscat to the Sultan Qaboos Grand Mosque and experience the end of noon prayers there and show the contrast between the two mosques. We're at the uh, Sultan Qaboos Mosque in downtown Muscat. People coming together, thousands. I was told a few minutes ago, maybe five or 6,000 people here worshiping together, praying together. What a stunning mosque this is and what a beautiful religion it is. And you will notice at the conclusion of a service that may have lasted for 45 minutes, as people were streaming out, how few people were checking their cell phones. Oman offers friendly people, a rich Arab culture, stunning landscapes, the influence of Islam, and a leader who's determined to grow the country in every way. If you want to explore the Arab world, make it a point to experience Oman. Oman is, is a, a, a worthwhile place to uh, come and explore. It's, I, if I say it's a treasure that has been hidden, uh, I would be biased, but that's the fact. It's, uh, it's peaceful, it's serene, it's uh, basically a therapeutic country. <laughs> so your jet lag will just vanish it quickly. It will vanish. Yes. Excellency, thank you thank so you much so for our conversation. Thank you for being here. Thank and come, you. Come again, as I said, next time for a whole month. <laughs> you have <laughs> to ride with the riders. Oh, yes. And dance with the dancers. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thanks. Special thanks to the Embassy of the Sultanate of Oman in Washington. And in Oman, 
the Ministry of Information, the Public Authority for Radio and Television, Muscat Municipality, and extra special thanks to the Intercontinental Hotel in Muscat, Oman. For information about my new book, The Chance of a Lifetime, and online video for all This Is America programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net. And now you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. This Is America is brought to you by the National Education Association the nation's largest advocate for children and public education. The Republic of Kazakhstan in the heart of Eurasia, a rich history, a culture of hospitality, and a future of development and growth. The U.S.-China Education Trust and the F.Y. Chang Foundation. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings.